All right, hi everyone. Um, we are gonna get started in a few minutes. We're gonna let people, sorry, that's my dog in the background. We're gonna let people get on. Um, uh, yeah, give people a couple of minutes to get on, but this is the webinar on the AGU 2022 fall meeting. Um, so thank you for coming and we will start in a minute or two. All right, I think people coming in are starting to slow down, so we can just kind of slowly get started here. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. This is um, a webinar presented by the AGU Atmospheric Science Section, Early Career Committee, the Hydrology Section Student Subcommittee, aka H3S, and then also the Global um, Environmental Change Early Career Committee as well. Um, and so this webinar today is just going to be all about the AGU fall meeting 2022. Uh, so we put together um, a slide show that we're going to go through, uh, just kind of compiling all information about AGU fall meeting in general, as well as this uh, fall meeting 2022, which is in Chicago. And we're also going to do a little live demonstration of the scientific program. Uh, so yeah, I think I think you guys this will be really helpful for everyone, especially if you're attending AGU fall meeting for the first time. So I am going to turn it over to Matt Presser, who is part of H3S, and he's going to give the first half of the presentation, and I will take over in a little bit. So go ahead, Matt. We can see your slides. Awesome, great. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, go ahead and jump right into it. Um, let's see. Get this change. Okay, so AGU 2022 fall meeting overview. Um, as you probably know, uh, it's taking place in Chicago, uh, Illinois this year at the McCormick Place Convention Center. Um, just for a little context, it's on the shore of Lake Michigan, um, and it's about 17 miles uh, from O'Hare International Airport, or ORT, about seven and a half miles from Midway Airport, uh, so good to know uh, when you're flying in. Um, it's also good to know these and plan ahead for traveling uh, to and from the airport and the conference center. I know uh, somebody in my lab was actually looking at this the other day, and on Friday at the end of the conference, um, to get between the convention center and uh, ORT airport, it can be up to an hour by car. Um, so they're kind of far away, so just be wary of that. Um, but so we're about two miles from downtown Chicago. It's just south of downtown Chicago and the dates are from December 12th to the 16th. There's gonna be a hybrid format. So a mix of in-person, virtual, and then hybrid events that will cater to both. And a brief note that I'll also throw in here because I didn't get mentioned later um, about getting around Chicago. Um, Chicago has one of the largest transit systems in the US. It's absolutely massive. Um, and the system is known as the L because it's an elevated track that runs throughout the whole city. To get to the conference, um, the red line and the green line both have stations that are fairly close to the conference center. Um, and there's a few buses as well. Um, but it's good to go ahead and plan ahead, see where you're staying, see how to get to the conference center by public transportation, or if you're gonna take ride share, um, or if you happen to be close enough to walk, remember it will be December, so it will be very cold. Um, but yeah, so just things to consider uh, ahead of time and try to plan ahead and maybe travel with a group. It's just easier not to get lost. 
Um, so fall meeting deadlines. Um, the early bird registration is November 2nd, which is next Wednesday. Um, so if you are going, get that in soon to save money. Um, and then November 15th is the deadline to book accommodations through AGU. Whether you're booking through AGU or on your own, also very good idea to get this in as soon as possible um, because places will fill up. This is a huge conference. There will be a lot of people. Um, and as I mentioned on the last slide, uh, considering travel time and whether you're going to take proper transportation or walking or taking a car, uh, it gets very cold. So you want to kind of think about this ahead of time. And then December 7th is when presenters have to notify if they're presenting in person or online. So it's good to just go ahead and get that registration is now in now for the early bird registration. Um, and then if your plans change later on, you can always uh, change that. So the types of sessions uh, at the AGU fall meeting, if you've never been before, um, there are uh, the oral and poster sessions, which are the majority of the sessions and where you will likely spend the majority of your time. Uh, there's town halls, which have a variety of topics. Uh, they're typically in a panel or round table format, and they can discuss a variety of topics of whatever they have convened. Um, there's keynotes in plenaries, um, which are just the general interest lectures given by leaders from across various fields. These have already been announced. Um, the three big ones are the presidential forum lecture, which is on Monday, um, and that talk is being given by Sherman Thomas. He's a local Chicago historian who's become very popular on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter, um, so he's going to be doing that talk about social equity in Chicago. Um, there's the Frontiers of Geophysics lecture on Thursday. Um, by Dr. Carlos Nobre. He's an earth system scientist known for uh, stuff in the Amazon. Uh, he's done a lot of great work there. And then there's also a very cool talk on Thursday called the Art and Science Plenary. Um, and so it's gonna be a moderated talk featuring a bunch of different artists that highlight climate change. Um, and then there are also named lectures. And so these are the lectures within each section where they award a distinguished scientist, maybe it's early career or late career, um, but every section has a number of named lectures. So whatever section you're in or might be interested in, uh, it's definitely a great idea to check out the named lectures because we're going to see like really prominent people in the field. Um, the daily schedule, uh, it follows the same uh, kind of framework every day. And I'll also note that the conference is five days long and being at the conference for almost 12 hours every day is not sustainable. So pace yourself and don't feel like you need to go to every single session every single day. Um, because of the hybrid format, uh, all of the talks are recorded and posted 72 hours after uh, the scheduled session, uh, at least, and they're available through February of 23. So if you miss something, don't feel bad, take your time, like enjoy yourself, and don't stress out about going to every single session every day. Um, but basically to walk through the daily schedule, uh, in the morning, there's an online poster viewing uh, from eight to nine. There are some uh, stations. Uh, there will be at the conference center to view those online if you don't have access to a computer. Um, so the morning poster session uh, in person will run from 9 to 1230. And so if you're interested in speaking with a poster presenter, this is the time to like go meet with them. Um, at the same time, there will be oral a section of oral sessions, a break and another section of oral sessions. Um, so feel free to do like a mix of going to the posters for some time and then the oral sessions for another and taking advantage of those breaks in between. Um, from 12.45 to 1.45 is when they'll have the plenary talks, town halls, or just people take a general lunch break and just rest for an hour. Um, and again, plan ahead, see what food options are available around the conference center, um, knowing if you're gonna have to travel far for it or if you wanna bring snacks with you or a lunch with you. Um, so yeah. And the afternoon follows the same session with the poster sessions going from 2.45 to 6.15, two blocks of oral sessions, and then another uh, area for town hall and other events. And so to dive into the oral session formats a little longer, each oral session follows the same format. It could differ a little bit depending on the convener, but they will all be 90 minutes long, um, and they will consist of presentations with a Q&A. Typically, there's going to be eight presenters. And they'll have eight minutes to present with two minutes of individual questions for them. Um, and then they'll wrap up with 10 minutes of Q&A at the very end. And so, uh, like I said, this can change based on who's convening the session, but same format will happen. Um, for presenters that won't be there in person, their talks will be recorded beforehand and played during the session. So we're going to avoid a lot of technical difficulties that we had last year uh, trying to do live stream talks. So it'll be great to have those recorded. Um, 
Oral sessions will also be live streamed and available a few days after. So again, like don't stress if you miss a session, watch it online, uh, take a break if you need it. Um, you can always catch up with them later. Uh, and then sessions can change, they can go long, technical difficulties always happen. So if you're going to a session to hear a specific speaker, make sure you show up early. You don't wanna miss uh, something that you're really excited for. And poster sessions. Uh, there are two poster session blocks each day, uh, the morning and the afternoon. Um, and as I mentioned, the first hour of each poster session is dedicated to online poster visits. Um, and so there will be some interactive monitors to view those if you don't have a computer uh, readily available. Um, there at the bottom of the screen, there are a couple of webinars for uh, uh, poster presenter training, uh, if you're interested in taking those up. Um, and poster presenters can hang up their posters anytime during their session. Um, one thing to note, if you want to specifically talk to a poster presenter, sometimes on the schedule, uh, they will list what time they will be at their poster. And so you don't have to hang around the poster session for four hours. It might have the hour that they're there. And so just kind of think ahead for those. And virtual attendance, uh, online only session and events will use Zoom. Um, and so we'll either be in, uh, you can use the Zoom web browser or the Zoom app. Uh, make sure your app is updated before the week starts. Um, don't want to run into those technical difficulties. Um, and most Zoom features will continue to be supported, such as breakout rooms, uh, the chats, and whatnot. Um, and there will be an online presentation platform that is released uh, closer to December, and it will provide access to creating your own custom schedule, viewing the interactive posters, and kind of navigating the schedule. Um, but right now, we are going to do a live demonstration of navigating the scientific program. Um, it's notoriously uh, glitchy and it can get slow, especially at the conference center when 15,000 people are trying to use it at once. And so hopefully we can just kind of show you some of the key things uh, to look out for. But to find it, uh, we have this link right here, but all you have to do is if you search AGU schedule, click on schedule and after it loads, let's see. You can click on the full meeting scientific program and schedule. And so some of the key things to note for uh, once it loads is uh, this panel over on the side. And so we have a couple different options. We can look at the schedule by day if you know what specific day that you're looking for. Um, so if we click on schedule by day, let it load again. Like I said, sometimes it runs a little slow. So we can see uh, it's broken down by each of the blocks. So eight to nine, if you recall from the format, these are gonna be online posters. And we know that's online because of uh, the little tag here. And so you can scroll through and see everything that's occurring in one day, which is a lot of information and probably too much for anybody to just scroll through. So we can also browse the program. So if you know, like if you're only interested in uh, atmospheric and space electricity, you can filter uh, based on whatever section you are interested in. And then the list becomes much more manageable. Um, some other things, um, we can go to sessions and events. And so if you're interested in seeing the keynotes and plenary, the named lectures, um, the town halls, or only oral sessions, this is another way to filter those. Um, another feature, there is a search tool. So you can search, and you can search based on any keywords. Uh, you can search the word flooding. If you're interested in flooding, you can search people's names. You can search people's institutes. Um, as an example, I was just going to search uh, myself to show you what pops up. So you have different profiles on here. Make sure you also, uh, once you have your profile, definitely populate it with your contact information in case anybody might want to reach out to you. But you can click on somebody's name, and you can see all the sessions and presentations they, uh, their name is listed on. So I'm doing this poster presentation, so I can click on that, see the title of the poster, see the abstract, see the date, time, and place that it is all occurring. We also have these buttons here, where you can favorite, uh, create a favorites list, and also add things to your own personal schedule, which are up here. I'll get to those in just a second to show those. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see all the authors, you can see the related sessions, you can see the section itself, and then it will also come up with similar presentations uh, that you might be interested in. So it's a great way to kind of explore what other things you might want to see if you find something really interesting. Um, another feature that I think was really useful to figure when I first went to AGU is you can kind of gain a lot of information from the format 
of the title. And so H would be hydrology section, 55M is the session. And then, so I can also go in here, click on the session that I'm in, and I can see the full list of all of the different poster presenters and talks for this specific session. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you have your own calendar, which you can add things that you're interested in seeing so you don't miss anything, uh, which is great because it breaks it down by day. And you can also look at your favorites list, and so you can look at your favorite sessions, your favorite papers, uh, sponsors and exhibits, and whatnot. Um, and so hopefully that's a little insightful. Definitely explore this the days leading up to the conference because it is a lot to filter through, um, but it is a great tool. So definitely uh, be sure to check that out. And pull the slides back up. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. That was really helpful. Um, always good to definitely recommend looking through the scientific program before you go. That's super good advice. I think um, AGU also usually puts makes kind of like an app for the fall meeting every year. And so if, if you don't want um, to like print out what sessions you want to go to on paper, I personally usually use the app. And so then you it has a little like tab you go to like my schedule, you can add things to your schedule. And then it shows you like what room it's in. So you kind of know where you're going. And I mean, I like the convenience of just being able to have it on my phone, but you also can kind of do it online and like print it out if you want to. Um, and just to address a question that was in the chat, all times um, on that daily schedule slide were in central standard time. Um, and all future times in this presentation should be in central time as well. Um, and I'll just note, I put it in the chat, but if anyone has any questions, we will do the best to answer them. Please put them in the questions tab um, in GoToWebinar, and we will try to address them the best we can. Okay, um, so to our second half of the presentation now, a little bit about the COVID-19 guidelines. Um, and so this is all the information that we have about COVID-19 guidelines right now. This is just what's on AGU's website. We don't really know anything else, but I recommend that you follow. Um, if you have a Twitter, you can follow AGU on Twitter, it's the at the AGU, or follow uh, H3S on Twitter, which will have their their Twitter handle at the end, because um, we will retweet anything about COVID-19. I'd also recommend as we get closer to the conference, like read through AGU's emails because they may put out additional guidelines um, through those emails as well. So as of right now, there is no masking requirement, um, but they said that what is on their website says that a one may be implemented as they monitor recommendations for health officials and conditions. So I guess kind of to be determined. Um, AGU does have, I did find this list of nearby hospitals, pharmacies, COVID-19 testing sites, and other like emergency information on their page. Um, so if you go to that link, uh, agu.org fall meeting pages attend in person and scroll to the bottom, um, it has this nice list of all places you can get tested for COVID and emergency hospitals and stuff. Um, we will try, hopefully we'll be able to share this PowerPoint somewhere, maybe on um, either the H3S or the AGU AS section website. Um, or we can also maybe send it out to all the people that attended today through email. Um, so you should be able to access this as well. We should be able to share it somehow. And the recording of this will also be posted as well. Um, and so AGU is going to require uh, COVID-19 vaccines being up to date. Um, they are going to monitor that through safe access, which is some sort of third party vendor. vendor. That's how they did it last year. And so I, you'll have to um, I believe we had to like enter our information into a website before AGU last year, um, like when you got your, which vaccine you got, when you got it. Um, maybe send in a picture of your vaccine card. I don't quite remember, but anyway, AGU will send out this information beforehand through email. Um, and I also just put here what the list of accepted vaccinations are, um, uh, whether you're U.S. citizen or a non-U.S. resident, it kind of varies, but all of these vaccines should be fine. Um, okay, Matt, you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is just a little bit of um, kind of safety information um, through AGU. 
So AGU does have this program called Safe AGU. Um, there's a link to their website here. Um, but basically it's this, this program that they have, if, if anyone feels um, harassed or threatened or unsafe when you're at the AGU meeting, there are staff members who will have these safe AGU buttons um, and they are trained to, to help people who you know, have experienced something inappropriate or, or unsafe. Um, and so if hopefully none of that happens, obviously, but if um, anything does happen, you can find these people with the safe AGU buttons when we're there. So um, unfortunately, on-site childcare through AGU as a whole is not offered this year. However, if you are a member of the um, AGU Atmospheric Science section, um, you can apply for um, child care support. Um, and so the applications for this are only open till October 31st. So it's due pretty soon. You have to fill out this Google form. Um, you can get up to $500. Um, so the only thing is you have to have the Atmospheric Science section as your primary affiliation and you have to either be presenting or convening a session at AGU. So you can't just be attending, you have to either be presenting or convening um, in order to get this money. But um, if you need this, this is a great resource. Um, I know the AGU Atmospheric Science section has um, put out um, some information about this through like their newsletters. Um, and maybe other sections are doing similar things, but we couldn't find anything about that, but maybe something to look into. Um, and then there's also, we did find there's a mother's room um, in the convention center, um, or sorry, I guess it's, a, it's, I think in a hotel, the Hyatt Regency attached to the convention center um, in the superior room as well. Um, okay, next slide. Um, so I also see one of the attendees has raised your hand. Can you, it's just easier for us if you could please just put your question in the question box um, because I'm not like it gets a little complicated like unmuting and muting people. So if you could just type out your question, that would be great. Um, so as far as travel support, um, AGU does offer discounts on air travel only through United Airlines though. Um, and so travel between the dates of December 9th through 19th um, and you have to go through Chicago O'Hare um, ORD. Um, and so if you are booking through United, you can enter this promotion code that's on the slide here um, and you should get some sort of discount. I'm not sure what it is, but I guess any discount is nice. Um, I don't think they offer any discounts if you're traveling by like train or anything. I could only find this one um, from about flying. Um, and then also I'll just note um, it's too late for this this year. But for next year, if you are a student, um, you can apply for a travel grant of up to $1,000 uh, to attend AGU. Um, usually the applications are due every year in like mid-August. So if you are planning on attending next year and you're a student, just be on the lookout for that because you can get some, some assistance for traveling to the fall meeting. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so now the next couple slides, we have tried to uh, compile some events and sessions during, before and during AGU that would be particularly good for early career scientists. Um, so the first one up top in the red here is a virtual event. So this is a the student and early career scientist uh, virtual networking kickoff. Um, so that's on Thursday, December 8th from 3 to 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, and so you do have to register for this event, um, but it doesn't cost anything. Um, so you have to register through AGU's website. Like when you register, um, there's some also registration for these like additional events like business meetings and networking events. And so you'll see this one on there as well. So you do have to pre-register, but it does not cost anything. Um, this would just be a good way to meet some early career people that are also going to be at the meeting. Um, there'll be discussions about science, about professional development, um, about random stuff. It should be fun. I think many of the members of our committees will probably be there. So definitely a good thing to attend if maybe you want to meet some people before you actually go to the meeting. Um, okay, and then right before AGU, there are also two other registration required events. Um, so both on Sunday night, so the first one is at four, uh, four o'clock central time at the Hyatt Regency uh, Ballroom AB. 
So this is the student and early career conferences welcoming event. So it's another, I think, kind of networking event. Um, and so you do have to pre-register as well. Um, and there is a cost. Um, I don't, it's not a lot, but I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's maybe like 10 or $15. Um, just pays for the space. And also there may be some like bar light food or something. I'm not entirely sure, but again, another good way to meet people before you actually start the meeting. Um, and then lastly, on Sunday from 6.30 to 8 at the Marriott Marquis, Great Lakes B, there is a atmospheric sciences early career and student networking event. Um, again, you have to pre-register. I think it's $15, um, but it's, you know, it's a good way to not only meet other early career scientists, but we will also have some leaders in the field of atmospheric scientists, some mid to late career people there to network with and get some advice from. and. Um, yeah, just get to beat. So it's a good opportunity as well. Um, okay, so that's all of kind of like the pre AGU meeting stuff. Um, Matt, if you could go to the next slide. I think here are some sessions um, during AGU. So some like town hall sessions being run by our committees. Um, I'll just note that this is certainly not a comprehensive list of all of the sessions like aimed at early career people. This is just what we know of, um, kind of what our committees are doing. Um, so there's certainly more than this um, that you can find in the scientific program. Um, and so there, first, there's a town hall um, put on by the H3S committee um, called Building Your Network, Collaborating as an Early Career Hydrologist. So that's on Monday um, at, in the kind of lunch town hall session time, starting at 1245. Um, then H3S is also um, holding these what are called innovation sessions, I believe. And so these are it's on early career led DEI initiatives. Um, so I think, um, yeah, this is going to be a more fluid session. So it starts at 11 central time. There might be panel discussions and, and more discussion based stuff. And then they also have this um, poster session as well um, that is on Tuesday um, during the early the morning poster session so that sounds like it'll be cool um, and then finally we the atmospheric science early career committee is doing a town hall on Wednesday during the lunch town hall time um, about successful proposal writing for early career scientists in atmospheric sciences so we're gonna have some program managers from um, NSF DOE NOAA and one more I can't remember. Um, and they'll be there to kind of have a panel event about writing proposals. And I'll mention it, we do say in atmospheric sciences, but I'm sure this a lot of the information there will be relevant for anyone really in any geoscience field. So check that out if you think you'll be writing proposals in the near future. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, so now this is some more kind of like networking and, and mentorship type events um, going on during the meeting. Um, so on Wednesday night at the Marriott Marquis, there is this joint hydrology, global environmental change and near surface geophysical trivia night. Um, so that seems like that'd be fun. Um, so you do have to register though, um, pre-register. I'm, I'm not sure if it costs any money, I don't think so, but you do have to pre-register. Um, and then Tuesday morning um, in the Hyatt is this early career and student breakfast, um, which I believe you don't have to register and I don't think there's a cost either. I was kind of trying to figure that out. Um, and then on Thursday night um, at the Hyatt Regency, there's an early career SciComm social. So that's also open to everyone. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Um, so these are some kind of like night networking events. Um, and then I'll also just add that there are these, um, the AGU Bridge Program and Mentoring 365 office hours. I believe they're every day from 9 to 12 p.m., 9 in the morning to 12, um, in the AGU Central Career Center pod in Hall A. So this is probably going to be by like the where the central registration is and the exhibit hall, I'm guessing um, this career center pod will be there there. But I think they just kind of do like open office hours to get career advice, probably look over your resume if you want. So um, yeah, that may be something worth doing. Okay, 
Um, sorry, just got some information about the trivia. Um, so the trivia is $5 for students and $20 for others, so not students. Um, so there is a, a slight cost and you do have to register, but I'm sure it'll be really fun. So you guys should definitely sign up for that. Next slide. Okay, and then, so finally we, our committees are trying to also plan some kind of more informal meetups. Um, so the H3S plans to at some point reserve pods, which are kind of these just like open networking areas, usually in the poster hall where you can kind of just reserve and have little meetings. Um, so they're going to try to reserve some of those for open meetings with the H3S committee um, and then also kind of serve as a place to plan like lunches, casual dinners and drinks with people who are there. Um, so they don't have any dates or times determined, but please follow um, H3S on Twitter. So at AGU underscore H3S for updates on their when those pod meetings are going to be and any other group activities or meetups that they're going to plan. Um, and then the AS Early Career Committee, the Atmospheric Science Early Career Committee are planning on doing an informal lunch on Monday. Um, so basically we did this last year and it went really well. So we just asked people to get grab your own food. So probably from somewhere in the convention center, there's usually some cafeterias or little food courts um, and then meet around 1 p.m., um, which is a little after the lunch hour begins outside, tentatively outside Hall A, which is going to be the poster and exhibit hall room. Um, I have a, believe I have a picture of that and maybe the next slide. Um, and so tentatively that will be where we'll meet and we'll just find a spot to all kind of sit down, eat our food together and just socialize a little bit. Um, so it's super informal. At, it doesn't have to be just atmospheric science people. Anyone is, anyone is welcome. Um, it's just a good way to meet some people if you don't really know that many people at AGU. Um, maybe meet some friends to hang out with. Um, and so as I said, the location is a little tentative, but it'll definitely be on Monday um, during lunch. And so if you want updates on that, you can also follow um, the chair of the Early Career Committee, Benjamin Nault, on Twitter, who is at Benjamin underscore ATM CHM. Um, for updates about that lunch. And then we may also try to do some other informal gatherings um, as well. So just, uh, yeah, Twitter is a good way if you have a Twitter to keep up on that. Uh, next slide. All right. So now we have compiled a little bit of advice for first time attendees. And I think Matt did a great job of covering actually some of these in, the, in his section of the talk, but I'll just kind of go over these again. Um, so number one, definitely wear comfortable shoes because you will be walking a lot. You're going to be walking uh, from your hotel to the convention center. You may have to go out of the convention center to get lunch. Um, you might go get dinner afterwards, like hang out with some people. Um, and the convention center looks like, based on the map we have, it looks pretty big. So you'll probably be walking around to get to different sessions and stuff. So um, I definitely suggest wearing comfortable shoes that you're comfortable walking in you know, for a full day. Um, definitely, as Matt mentioned, plan out your daily schedule, um, not only what talks you want to go to, but you should also probably kind of look at where they are, like what rooms they're in, um, and then also um, look at where those rooms are when we have a full map from AGU, which will come out um, in the next couple months. Um, and just kind of plan out your schedule, try not to go to sessions that are like off the bat, you know, super far away from each other because you're going to be running around a lot. Um, but yeah, definitely make sure you kind of have a plan for each day, of which, which sessions you want to go to schedule in some break time because you're going to be tired. I promise. Um, it's a really big conference and very long days. Um, so definitely, you know, do some exploring and have some fun as well. You don't have to be at the conference the entire time. Um, check out the exhibit hall for sure. So the exhibit hall is where all like um, kind of different companies and it's like uh, universities and um, just all different institutions related to, you know, geosciences all have um, different tables and there's people to talk to that work there. Um, it's good for like networking, good for career stuff. Um, it's also just cool to go to. So definitely check that out. 
Um, if you, especially if you want to do a lot of networking, maybe look, looking for a job soon, definitely plan out a little elevator pitch about your research because I'm sure you'll be talking to many people. Um, you can also bring business cards maybe with your, your name and your email on it so that you can hand those out to people. Um, that way you don't have to be scrambling to write down your email on a little scrap of paper like I usually end up doing. <laughs> um, definitely feel free to explore sessions outside your main subject area. Um, there's so much cool science that goes on at AGU. And so if you're just remotely interested in something, I definitely recommend yeah, take, doing a session outside of what your main subject area is. It's always, uh, you never know who you'll meet or you know maybe you'll be super interested in it. So definitely a good idea. Poster sessions specifically are really great for networking. Everyone's out, like kind of walking around. Um, there's usually food and some, some drinks. Um, so it's, it's good for like meeting up with people or maybe getting a group together to chat about science. Um, that's definitely like a main networking time is those poster sessions. Um, I recommend bringing like a refillable water bottle so you can carry that around and always have water um, and a reusable coffee mug if, if you like to drink coffee or tea in the morning. That's nice as well. Definitely prepare for the weather. So we're going to be in Chicago in the winter. Um, so the average maximum temperature during the day is around 36 degrees Fahrenheit and the minimum is like below freezing. So about 28 degrees Fahrenheit or negative two Celsius. So definitely pretty chilly. Um, Bring a nice coat, I would say, nice outer coat. Um, and also rooms in the convention center I found at AGU can like either be really cold sometimes or really hot if there's a lot of people in there and they're, it's really small. So I'd say try to wear some layers so that, you know, if you have a sweater, get too hot, you can take it off or you can put it back on. Um, that's just kind of from my personal experience, a good way to be prepared. Next slide, please. Okay, um, so here is the map of the convention center from the convention center website. So AGU will put out a map of the, the conference rooms, like where they are in the convention center um, and, and where the poster hall is, and they'll put out their own map. It's not just not out yet. So, you know, monitor the website, the, the fall meeting website for that, but I promise it'll be there. That way you can kind of plan out, you know, where, your talk is um, where where the different sessions are that you want to go to, um, but just this is the map just from the convention center. So the the convention center does consist of different buildings. It looks like there's generally like um, sky crossings or what are those called? Um, skywalks kind of between the buildings, so you don't have to go down to the street to get into the different buildings. Um, so that's nice because you wouldn't have to go outside. Um, but it seems like definitely McCormick South, so the South building will definitely be um, a hub. I think based on what we can find, that's where the poster hall and the exhibit hall is going to be in McCormick South on level three. Um, we also saw that there does there's a food court on level 2.5. I'm not sure what 2.5 means, but I guess below the poster hall um, in McCormick South, there will be a food court. So that's a good, probably quick place to grab food. Um, we did see that it seems like the atmospheric science oral sessions are probably going to be in the Lakeside Center. Um, so that's up at the top of this map here. Um, so there should be yeah, like a sky bridge from Lakeside to the South Building, it looks like. Um, so at least those two buildings will definitely be being used by AGU. Um, okay, and one more thing I just added before to this PowerPoint. So, and Matt did a good job of kind of talking a little bit about this. Um, there is public transit around Chicago and definitely by the convention center. So definitely go to this link. I found this link from the McCormick Place, the convention center website, um, which gives you information not only about getting around the convention center area, but also about getting to and from the airport using public, public transit. Um, so I definitely recommend looking at that site, um, planning that out beforehand, obviously. Um, but there are definitely public transit options for sure. Next slide, please. All right, um, so here's a couple of points of interest, AKA like restaurants, coffee, some fun stuff to do. 
around, kind of around the convention center and, and in Chicago. So I will just shout out to Shu Yu Chang for these recommendations. She's part of the um, H3S committee, I believe. Um, and so I think she either went to grad school, she either lives in Chicago now or went to grad school there, I can't quite remember, but she put together this kind of list of stuff near the convention center. Um, so there's plenty of coffee shops, it seems like, um, lots of different types of restaurants, so burger places, pizza, um, Chinatown is not too far from the convention center. Um, and then there's also some different look like breweries, um, rooftop bars, um, some other points of interest to go to. So as we mentioned, definitely take some time to do some fun things while you're in Chicago. You don't have to be at the at the meeting the whole time. Um, you know, it's always good to take a little break and maybe do some exploring. Um, awesome. So as I said, we will try to post this so that you guys have these the list of these recommendations. Um, we'll keep you updated on where we can post this. And also, again, this, this recording will be posted as well. Um, okay, next slide, please. We're getting close to the end here. Okay, so for international attendees, um, so COVID vaccine is still required for US entry. So you do need to have a COVID vaccine, um, but there's currently no testing, COVID testing requirement to get into the US. So you do need a vaccine, but you do not need a test. Um, if you do need a test to get back to where you're going, I recommend you plan ahead, uh, maybe schedule a test beforehand. So that information will probably be on um, AGU's website where they have that list of COVID testing locations and stuff, um, pharmacies. Um, so if you do need to get a test and you know you have to get it, I recommend planning ahead and maybe scheduling it so you know that you'll be able to get it in the proper amount of time. Um, also recommend you know bring a small amount of cash as backup just in case your card isn't accepted somewhere um there's also a link here to details on getting visas and also letters of invitation for traveling um so that's all on agu's website and then also just mention that on sunday the 11th at five o'clock central time in the hyatt regency there is an international reception so i think this is just for all people traveling from outside the US. If you wanna meet other international people who go to AGU, um, feel free to attend this reception. Um, I can't remember, I think it, I think registration may have, may be required again um, from in AGU's website, kind of when you do your registration, there are these options to also register for these types of events. Next slide. Okay, this is just a couple additional resources. So um, AGU does a mentoring program you can check out. Um, there's a frequently asked questions page that if you do have any questions that aren't answered here, the, the answer may be on this page. Um, there is a blog post um, that was from a few years ago, but it's still very relevant. I think we even took some information from this blog post and put it in here by Laura. Guertin, um, you know, first timers guide to the AGU fall meeting, check that out. Um, and then there's another beginner's guide to the AGU fall meeting uh, we found as well. So all these resources are helpful if you do have questions that um, maybe we can't answer here today. And these also all have some you know, tips for first timers as well. Next slide, please. All right, so this is our last slide. Um, so this is, so I just wanna, first of all, Thank you to all members of the Atmospheric Science Section Early Career Committee, H3S, and the uh, Global Environmental Change Early Career people who helped put these slides together. Um, I promise Matt and I did not do it alone. There are many people behind the scenes who are helping us put together the slides and also run this today. Um, so thank you to all you guys. Um, we also put our the general early career emails. So the AS section, H3S, and a Global Environmental Change, if you want to contact our committees for any reason, you have any questions, um, you know, suggestions for other webinars, please reach out. Um, we're always open to talking to people. Um, and then I also, we also put mine and Matt's emails and my Twitter as well, because um, we are the moderators today. Um, I don't know if Matt is going to AGU, but I will be there in person. So if you see me there, feel free to say hi. Um, are you going, Matt? 
I will be there. I will be there. Awesome. All right, so we will both be there. So if you see us, please feel free to say hi, ask us questions. Um, we're always willing to help. Um, and yeah, so do we have any more? I think we do have a question in the chat. Um, question, will this presentation slide be available? Okay, yeah, so as I said, um, we will find a place to post this. Um, it may be on the H3S website or the or the AS section, uh, AGU website, um, one, of, one of them. And we will, um, we will put it out on Twitter as well, where it is, the link to it for sure. Um, and I believe when everyone attends today, um, we do get a list of like your emails. Um, so we can also email out the slides as like a PDF as well to everyone who came today. Um, but will definitely be posted somewhere and the recording will also be posted somewhere as well. So um, we're definitely, you know, we try to get this information out. Uh, let me see any, yeah, so we have about 15 minutes left. So if anyone has any questions, please put them in the question box. Uh, we are happy to try to answer your questions as much as we can. Oh, I see one. Do you know if the early career events include careers in industry? Um, yes. So I know that the, I can only speak really to the atmospheric science section networking event, which again is on Sunday night, I think at 630. There will be definitely be people who work in the industry there, um, like mid to late career people who work in industry. Um, so I know that for sure. Um, likely, I mean, there's definitely people who work in industry at the uh, the exhibit hall. So that's a good place to find people who work in industry as well. But I mean, there's always, always a lot of people who work in all different fields at AGU. So um, I'm sure, you know, if, if you're interested in that, you can definitely find people working in all different types of types of industry, all different types of places. Definitely at the AS section networking event, which again, you have to register for in advance, um, but probably at other networking events and definitely in the exhibit hall as well, I would say. There's another um, question here. Can you find all the events and sessions? Um, just check out the, uh, the online schedule uh, that we kind of did the walkthrough for. And if you missed that part, then just Google AGU schedule it'll be the first thing that pops up and that'll have all of the things broken down uh by what type of session uh, and it'll also include all of those events as well yeah yeah definitely the scientific program that matt showed and again this recording is going to be posted so if you did miss the walkthrough of the scientific session or the scientific program i'm sorry um you'll be able to watch it again um and as i said we will be posting this recording as well as the slide somewhere so you'll be able to get like our little list of um sessions that we recommend as well um someone did ask about vaccine so moderna yes moderna is accepted um so if you have three doses of moderna you're definitely fine okay i think we got to all the questions that are in the chat right now uh, do you see someone raising your hand? I, if you could just put your question in the question box. Um, I just am like a little unsure how to like mute and unmute people and I don't want to mess anything up. So um, if you could just type out your question in the question box, we will get to it. I'm trying to think. Um, if I feel like we missed anything or if I had anything to add, we didn't think of. There's another question in the question box about uh, COVID vaccine recency. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. And I think some of those things are still being kind of determined by AGU. I would search it and then also just be aware that things change. Um, a lot of their COVID policies still haven't even be, been set yet. So like right now there's not a mask mandate, but that very well could change. Um, so I would I would look that up on AGU's website and look up for information from them. 
yeah. And I'm not, I'm also not sure. I think, yeah, they're asking maybe about vaccines to get into the U S um, not just AGU. So AGU based on what I read as, and as we said, this could all change, you know, we're not officially, or we don't work for AGU. So we don't really have any insider info on this. So please monitor AGU's website and Twitter for that information about their vaccines. Um, their vaccine mandate. As far as U.S. vaccine mandate, I I don't know how recent the vaccines have to be. Um, that information is certainly on like the U.S. government's website somewhere, um, but I don't want to say anything because I honestly really don't know how recent your vaccines have to be. Um, I'll just mention Lorraine, who is here helping us, who is part of H3S, said she just came back to the U.S. from Brazil. Um, and she had no problem with a recency of vaccine. She says, as long as you are vaccinated and, and have proof, you should be fine. But, you know, just try to keep monitoring that, I would say, um, as we get closer to the meeting. Thank you for all these questions, everyone. Keep them up if you have any. And if we don't have any more questions next minute or so, um, we, we can end the, the session as well. Um, as I said, we will post this somewhere, um, probably on one of our websites, we'll post the slides and the recordings. Um, we will put out that information um, definitely on Twitter, um, maybe through some of the newsletters and, and for AGU forums and stuff, we'll try to kind of get this out here because I know it will be useful to a lot of people. Oh, um, and Lorraine also just added, um, she said, make sure to mention the skills for science workshops organized by AGU. Um, so if you go into the scientific program and search skills for science, um, those are sessions that should be really relevant for any early career people um, as well. So thank you, Lorraine, for that suggestion. And I'll say definitely, um, we mentioned this, in the, Matt mentioned this in the beginning, but the early career, uh, sorry, the early bird registration deadline is November 2nd, which is like next week. So definitely make sure to register because you'll get the cheapest registration rate um, if you do that by November 2nd. It goes up after that. Um, I think that's the most important deadline coming up, but I would definitely say make sure you sort out your hotel situation soon. Um, look out how you're going to get from the airport to your hotel and also your hotel to the convention center. Um, you know, I would I would start planning that stuff out now because we really aren't too far from AGU. It's only uh, a little over a month. It's pretty close. Um, okay, I see Ben Nault, who is the chair of the Atmospheric Science Early Career Committee, uh, says that to be considered fully vaccinated by the CDC. Um, you need two full doses for vaccines that need two doses or one full dose for vaccines that need one. Um, and so all that information is on the CDC's website. Um, so yeah, someone said, you know, if you have Moderna or Pfizer, if you have two doses of that vaccine, you're good. If you have one of Johnson & Johnson or any of the other ones that require just one dose, um, you are considered fully vaccinated in the U.S. <laughs> But again, yeah, monitor that information on the CDC website and also on AGU's website as well. Awesome. Um, Lorraine also just put her email, um, or sorry, her Twitter, and Danka, who is also part of the H3S Twitter tags. So you can reach out to them as well. Um, and again, we have our emails up on the screen, both of the committees and of me and Matt as well. So we are 
always here for you guys to answer questions um, and share information about AGU. Okay, I think, um, I think we're good. I think we've answered all the questions in the box. Looks like our no new, new ones. Um, so I think we are good. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Matt for hosting this with me. Thank you to all the other members of H3S, Early Career Committee, the AS Early Career, Early Career Committee, and the um, Environmental Change Early Career Committee. Everyone was super helpful. I hope this information is helpful to everyone that attended. Thank you for attending. As I said, this stuff will be posted and we will, we will try to spread it around as much as we can. Um, so I will end the recording. Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>